Hey, Sundaria here. This is part three of this picture. <laughs> it's about the cauldron, colouring the water and the rest of her clothes. Uh, let's start with this little bit of black just around the cap here. And then what I'm going to do is go through with the Faber-Castell. Um, it's like a really nice teal colour and obviously you don't have to use the same colour. But I really just like this teal type colour. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around basically all the lines that Charlie's gone and drawn in for the water and I'll go along the top and just kind of cap it. So I'm following the line and just softly fading it off that line a little bit and then what I'll do is I'll come back with the darker blue. And what I'm going to do as well is I'm actually going to speed up the blue because there's a lot of it um, and would be here forever if I didn't. <laughs> I hope that's okay but like I say it's literally just following the lines that Charlie's already drawn. She's awesome and she's even got like you kind of get a vibe of where Shadow should be anyway from how she's drawn it so that's I mean it's a huge help. <laughs> So one thing I do to keep myself from getting bored with the same page is I'll actually go and do bits and pieces and then shift around. So after I've done the blue, I'm going to come in, you know, I've come in and I'm doing Elaine. So pretty much the same as the last two videos, base layer of peach and then going back with darker browns. Um, just to add a bit of dimension, some shadow whatever other fancy word you want to use for darker color um and just try to make it look a little bit more less less flat that's the word i was looking for um so yeah going through and just adding in that dark brown to her arms and her hands and then under the arms too so just some shadow you know for where you know, because her arms are away from her body, so there'd be a bit of shadow underneath her, so just adding that all in. Then coming back with the light peach and going over all of it, just to kind of blend it all down and make it look a little bit more vibrant, I think. Okay, so after Elaine gets out of the cauldron, 
and she's all sopping wet. Um, and Lucian goes, hey, she's my mate. Um, he gives her his cloak to wear to cover herself up with. So when I th thought of Lucian's cloak, the way I see it is autumn colours. Um, I know he's staying in the spring court, but much like his bedroom at the manor, you know how Feyre's explained, it's it's autumn coloured and things like that. I would imagine his cloak would be too. I don't know. <laughs> it's just what I thought. And I really like autumn colours anyway, so I just wanted to do that. So what I'm going to do with the cloak, I mean, first I'm adding in the shadows. I mean, it, it's really weird. Certain things I'll add the shadows first, certain things I'll add them last. In this case, I did a little bit of highlighting and then I've come through to do the shadows, but I think that's because the cloak's going to be a mixture of browns and oranges and light browns anyway, so it's it's a bit different to like a normal shadow, I guess you could say. Um, so once I go through with the dark brown, I'm going to come back with like that goldy yellow brown that I used in the other video. Um, the one that you'd be weary of if you're going to use it on skin. And um, like a lighter orange. And then I'm just going to layer all of the colours. So what you'll see is I go back and forth a lot. But that's how I kind of get it. It's all about layering. So you can see how I'm leaving little gaps. I'll come back in with another colour. Again, leave some more gaps. See, so here I'm like chucking in a little bit of this colour and still you can see there's some white area there. So that's, I mean, it's just how I've decided to do this cloak and it's kind of similar to how I do my galaxy style stuff. But what I'll actually do is when I get to a certain section on the page that I'm working on at the moment, I'm going to do a bit of galaxy. So I'll do a video about that when that comes and um, I'll show you how I do that. It's pretty much this, but just with galaxy-ish colours, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna keep going back and forth with these browns and yellowy browns and oranges until the cloak looks the way I want it to look. As you can tell, I go back and forward a lot. Um, it's, I don't know, I've always done it and I try not to, but it's like I'm never happy with something after its first swipe. So, a lot of back and forth. 
Now, what I'm going to do with the cauldron is be really messy. Because I don't want to spend forever getting this perfect look on this dirty object. I mean, it's described as like iron. Um, so I kind of, I mean, I don't know, the way I picture it, I just think it's antique -y and old looking. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to quickly map out kind of where I'm going to put my darkness, where I'm going to put my lightness. Um, I'm going to note this before I do it. I didn't see it for a long time. Then once I finished filming this part, I looked at the picture and I could see the butt. Everyone goes on about seeing the butt in the cauldron and I was just like, I can see it now. Then you can't unsee it. So the next video is a bit about me getting rid of the butt. It's really messy. It's not usually how I would go about it. It would normally look a lot tidier, but I just didn't want a butt in my picture. So I was really quick and rushed about it. Um, what I'm doing here, again, Charlie's brilliant. She's gone and she's put through like almost kind of like guides as to where you'd put your darkness and your lightness. So I'm pretty much going through with this dark grey. Um, it's the 70% cool grey. And I've gone through and I'm not cool grey, warm grey, sorry. I need to buy a new cool grey because I just broke the rest of it. Um, so I'm going through and adding all the darkness, then coming back with the lighter, the 50% the and the 20% warm greys, and just blending it all through. Okay, so once I finish doing that, I'm coming back with this nice dark blue, but like I've said, you can use any dark blue. Um, there's no, this one's right, that one's wrong. And basically what I'm doing is, because it's water, I don't want to really be super tidy about it, and I'm doing a lot of long strokes so that when I come back with that light blue again, it'll kind of mix together nicely. Um, I'm just following pretty much the bottom half of the lines. The other thing you'll notice too is I go a little bit over onto the grey like in her dress and um, in her hair and things but that's just her merging with the water if that makes sense. Um, so yeah I mean I think it makes sense for that to happen and like I say I'm just going along the bottom half now so with that light blue I went along the top half of the line now I'm going along the bottom half of the line and I'm going to fill in all of that water. Again, it's much like the lighter colour. There's a lot of water. So I'm going to speed through it. I'm actually going to time lapse a lot of it because otherwise we'd be here a really long time. It's a lot of water. <laughs>
So, still going through, um, just in case you wanted to know what this colour was, it's the Indigo Blue by Prismacolor, and um, number 353 with the Faber-Castell, um, that's if you want the same blue water, like I say, any light blue, any dark blue will work just the same, um, and you can see what I mean though, by leaving gaps with my dark blue, you just go over the whole lot. Like, when I blend, I don't, like, I don't do a line of blue and a line of green next to each other, for example. I'll do a bit of blue, then I'll kind of overlap it so it merges better. And if you look at that, I mean, I'm covering the whole lot. I'm basically covering over it all because ultimately that dark blue is darker, so it doesn't matter. It's going to show up. Um... So it acts as a blender pencil and everything, and it looks really pretty. One thing you'll notice too that I like to do um, is because I color quickly, I often make mistakes. But look at this this light peach, which is the color of your skin. It's awesome, especially with the Faber Castell. So Faber Castell, when you draw that on Prismacolor, it's great, it looks nice, but the Prismacolor, because they're quite waxy and the Faber-Castell aren't, um, you know, they, they just cancel it out. So Faber-Castell is almost rubbed out, which is awesome for mistakes. So that's another reason why I like using a mixture of the two, um, because, yeah, they do react that way and it's, I don't know, I like it. <laughs> so this is part three. Finish up this water and um, I'll get part four done, which is finishing the rest of the page. Hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was helpful. And ask any questions if you have them. Bye.